Yo, dudes, the Empire's pretty chill. Maybe you could, like, join it or something. Hey guys, so today is the day I'm finally going to be seeing Captain Marvel with my friends. So I'm going to be heading to the cinema right now to call see. I'm really excited for this. So, and if anyone's wondering where I am, I've left a note on my desk. So, yeah, I really can't wait. So, I'll see you guys later. <gasps> oh no, I think I've arrived too late, haven't I? What's this? I have gone to the cinema. See you later, Luke. Oh dear. Looks like I've definitely come too late. Better luck next time. <sighs> Why did I leave before my future self could warn me? I could have saved myself from lots of pain. Oh man. Hmm. Hey everyone, Lucamus Prime here. So. As you've probably seen by the title of today's video, it's time for another trash talk. This time it's going to be for a film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe's Infinity Saga. And it's also the only film in the saga which I'm going to be trash talking. And that of course is none other than 2019's Captain Marvel! Oh my god. So this film was directed by Anna Bolden and Ryan Fleck. It, its development, of course, began in May 2013. It was officially announced in October 2014. And Nicole Pillman and Meg LaFauver were hired to, to write the film following April after submitting separate takes on the character. And borrowed elements from Roy Thomas' 1971 Creed Scroll War comic book storyline. And Brie Larson was announced to play Carol Danvers at the 2016 San Diego Comic Con with board and, and, and Flack hired the to direct the film in April 2017. And Geneva Robertson Dwarrett was also hired to rewrite the script with a rest of the cast added by the start of filming. Location shooting began in January 2018 with principal photography starting that March in California and concluding in Louisiana in July 2018. And several actors, of course, in this reprised their roles from, from, from previous films, including Samuel L. Jackson and Clark Gregg, who were both digitally de-aged in production to reflect the film's setting in the 90s in 1995. The film premiered in London on February 27, 2019, and was theatrically released in the United States on March 8th as part of Phase 3 of the MCU. The film grossed over $1.1 billion worldwide, making it the first female-led superhero film to pass the one billion dollar mark. It became the fifth highest grossing film of 2019 and was the 23rd highest grossing film of all time during its theatrical run. The film received generally positive reviews from critics and with praise for promises of the cast. And you know what, I couldn't disagree more with that. Now, when it comes to my reaction guys, so as you probably saw my record opening, I saw this film at a, at a cinema and at first I thought it was okay, but... Unfortunately, though, when it comes to rewatches and when I've, I've looked back at a movie, and especially from last night's rewatch, I've unfortunately realised how wrong I was because now that I think about it, guys, this film, in my opinion, is utter trash. Like, wow. And I would probably regard it as the absolute worst of Infinity Saga, and probably, in my opinion, the most over overrated of Infinity Saga due to getting positive reviews somehow. Now, would I say it's the worst MCU movie? Well, I used to until I saw what, in my opinion, is the worst, which is Eternals, or as I call it, Crap Eternals, because I saw it from a couple of years ago and, and I absolutely despised it. That, in my opinion, is the absolute worst, and if you were to ask me which, which of two ones I'd rather watch, I'd rather watch this, but it's not saying much because I'd rather call it some crap in Marvel. So... Yeah, this is unfortunately going to be a trash talk, guys, because my opinion on the movie when I first saw it has definitely not aged well at all when I look back at it. So, so what is the film about? So, the film is set in 1995, and it follows Carol Danvers as she becomes Captain Marvel, as if I'm in quotation marks, after Earth is caught in the centre of a galactic conflict between two alien civilizations. Now... Now, let's get through why I think is good about the film first, because if I'm to be honest with you guys, there's barely anything that I'd say is good about it. So, so the starters, Stan Lee, rest in peace, you're an absolute legend. And, and in this film, guys, he does make a cameo appearance. I think it's like a half an hour in where he appears on 
where he's on public transport reading the scripts for his cameo appearance in a movie in, in, in the Nine Night Fly called Moral Rats. And Stan, you're an absolute legend, and rest in peace to you. Thank you so much for co co creating all these iconic characters and inspiring billions of people around the world. Thank you, Stan. So, Stan's cameo was probably my favourite scene in the movie. It was really great to see Stan in this. Sadly, of course, this was a post-boomers release for Stan. And another thing I did also like our film was also the intro or scene because you know how ever since um, since I think it was Doctor Strange they um, they've included of course um, a Marvel fanfare with shots from the movies and the characters as well. I really love how this film um, instead featured pictures and footage of Stan from from his past cameos in the saga, and I definitely really love seeing that. And of course, with a, with a text saying thank you, Stan. That was definitely, in my opinion, a great tribute to Stan, and I definitely really love how he did that. And yeah, yeah rest in peace to Stan Lee. Also as well, now, one reason why I do also prepare this film over Eternals, why I watch this, is also because, in my opinion, the visual effects are, are also slightly better. And I've got to give high praise to the de-aging department in this for de-aging Samuel L. Jackson and Clark Gregg when they prize their roles as Nick Fury and, and Coulson, because... I think it looked really convincing. It's actually very hard to tell that it's CGI because it's very impressive, in my opinion. I think they did a really great job with it for this, because this was also an, an entire film as well. It's a shame, really, that recent days are not, not been as good as this, isn't it? What a shame, eh? And also, as well, um, another thing I'd also like is also a setting in the 90s because I like how we feature lots of songs from popular 90s bands and singers, which is really cool. I mean, we made references to several 90s films as well because I wanted to talk about the 995 from Moral Rats, of course, which is which is the kind of appearance that Stan was was was, um, was reciting his line for, of course. And also as well, um, an another thing as well that I also thought was good was also how the film included a blockbuster at the start as well. That was definitely nice to see as well. Um, I definitely miss seeing Blockbuster because there was one up my street where I live, but unfortunately it's closed now, which is a big shame, isn't it? And also as well, the only cinema film which I was drawn into the most when watching it, aside from seeing Stan, was probably, in my opinion, the mid credit scene where we see the Avengers who, who found Nick Fury's his page that he'd activated in Infinity War's ending. And, and it was... And it was definitely, of course, a, a, a nice setup, of course, for Avengers Endgame. Like, that was probably the only scene I was drawn into the most when seeing this movie. And, and of course, Carol Danvers appeared looking for Fury. And that, of course, was, was setting up Endgame. And I think, wasn't it with Russ Bowles who directed that cameo appearance of, of the Avengers? Yeah, I think it was, wasn't it? It was just pretty cool. And I guess as well, the music by Pine at, at Tobac is also okay, too, in my opinion. It's decent. And... In terms of performances, you know, the cast, you know, do the best with what they're given, really, in my opinion. But it's unfortunately not saying much because now we get to the bad qualities. So, now, in my opinion, the worst thing about this movie is probably Carol Danvers herself because she's such an insufferable, annoying character, just loathsome, and I can't stand her. Like, I really can't stand my character at all. And as far as I'm concerned, guys, Carol Danvers is not Captain Marvel. As far as I'm concerned, she's Miss Marvel. Yeah, I think the idea of calling her Captain Marvel is stupid because her name is Miss Marvel, for crying out loud. And as far as I'm concerned, guys, the only Captain Marvel I can accept is Billy Batson from DC. Not Carol Danvers. No chance. And... And what I think is also annoying is how she literally has the exact same miserable face for pretty much a whole movie. Like, wow. Like, she's just an annoying character and, and also really bland as well, in my opinion. Like, barely showing any emotion. Like, I don't know what the hell happened at all with, with this movie. Like, this is this is not how you portray a main character. Like, if you guys want to see a much better female or main, main character in, in a movie, I'd recommend Alita, released in the same year. Because that was a, a way better portrayal of a female protagonist than this most definitely and also as well now while i did love the de-aging of samuel L. jackson to make him look younger in this i kind of thought this movie ruined fury a bit because they made him a bit of a douchebag in my opinion and a bit of a coward and i personally didn't like that that's not the fury i know i mean samuel L. jackson was good as him he did he did a good a good job making him him himself sound and younger and all that but I feel that, in my opinion, this film made Fury really annoying. 
and also as well now when it comes to a film's villain i think it's really dumb how this film can't decide what villain it, it wants to have because it starts off with we were thinking the villains of a film of the scrolls which of course they are in the comics right but it's revealed towards the end of the film that the villain all this time of course is is the Star Force member as on, on Harla with the Kree. So, like, what? Like, that doesn't make any sense at all. And personally, guys, I did not like having maybe Scrolls good in this because I prefer them being villains, to be honest. Because that's how, who they are, of course. They're not good guys. So, the idea of, of them being good guys didn't work for me. And, I mean, I did like Ben Mendelsohn as Talos. He's, he's probably my favourite out of the Scrolls in this because he was entertaining, in my opinion, and... I also got to give props to Ben as well for, for portraying characters in disguise because in Ben Mendelsohn's normal appearance, he does play Fury's boss, Keller. And I like how he uses, he uses an American accent for that role. And of course, when he plays Telos, he uses his natural Australian accent. So, definitely got to give props to Ben for that talent. But honestly, though, I just didn't like how I made the scrolls good in this. It didn't work for me. And also as well, now... One thing about this film I was looking forward to was, was probably the return of several characters, of course, as their younger selves. Like, I've already talked about Coulson, for example, and, and also, this film also brings about Ronan the Accuser with Lee Pay surprising his role. And, unfortunately, however, they're both hardly in the movie, and that really just disappointed me. I mean, when it comes to the scrolls, I only liked them in, in the first half of the film where they're hostile. That's the only time I like them in this, but... Once they revealed to be good, it all went downhill for me. I mean, one example when I liked them was, was following when one of them impersonated Coulson. That was actually, you know, a pretty cool tactic in my opinion. But I do wish we got to see more of Coulson, though, in this. Um, especially because I, I missed him a lot after he, he unfortunately got killed in the, in the first Avengers movie. I was hoping we'd see him again in other, other films, but sadly not. But when we finally got to see him in this film, he barely appeared. Thankfully, of course, I did see him in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which was a great show he was in as a main character, but, yeah, I didn't like him in this film, he was underused. And, also, when it comes to Ronan as well, I also didn't like how he was also underused, because he barely appeared in the film, only, only had a fair few scenes, which is just disappointing. And, of course, he's got a different appearance, because he's not got his makeup on that he, that he wears in the first Guardians of the Galaxy film yet, because it's a prequel, of course, but... I was so disappointed that they, they really underused Ronan. And when it comes to others who return as well, um, we also got to see Jaron Honsley come back as Korath, but unfortunately he was also underused too, which I also did, did not like. And I also feel that several characters in this were also, in my opinion, underdeveloped as well, like many of them, in my opinion. Like, I think even as well, um, Carol Danvers is... His friend as well, in my opinion, of course, which was um, Maria Rambo, in my opinion, was underdeveloped. Like, who is this character? I don't even know her. Like, and it, it, and also as well, the character Carol Danvers, one, of the, one reason why I think she's also in softball is also because she's a Mary Sue, because she gets her powers, of course, you know, purely by accidents and doesn't even train to use them at all. So, like, goodness me. Talk about, how, you know, bad development right there. Now... When it comes to other characters who I think are also annoying, I also did not like the film's actual villain, of course, which is yon -Rog, played by Jude Law. I unfortunately regard yon -Rog as as my least favourite role of Jude Law. I mean, don't get me wrong, guys, he's a great actor. My favourite role of his, of course, is, is Dr. Watts in the Rod Allen Jr. Sherlock Holmes films, but... In this, I could not stand yon -Rog. And I also think as well, the final fight between him and Carol Danvers is also a joke, too, because... We finally going to have like an epic final fight, but no. He instead says to her, I'm so proud of you. And that's it. So like, what an absolute joke. Like, you get me to watch the film um, only to be treated with that? Are you kidding me? Like, I went to see, see this film so excited because it was after seeing Infinity War, I wanted to see, he, of course, Carol Danvers make her appearance, but unfortunately, that time was completely ruined by this trash. And... And that's not the only annoying character because, because get this guys right, this one introduces of course a cat who, who of course is called Goose, named after of course Goose in Top Gun. But then again that's also dumb because I'm pretty sure in the comics the cat's called Chewie as in Chewbacca from Star Wars. But, but of course in this however, I personally found Goose the cat really annoying and, and, and guys I have two cats and, and I love cats very much but Goose the cat in my opinion was very annoying. 
And I don't understand why we had to, had to have Goose in this because Brie Larson is allergic to cats in real life. So why bother including a cat in this when she's allergic? That's ridiculous. So in the scenes where the cat's near her, the cat's CGI. And in my opinion, the cat's CGI was completely and utterly hideous. That's why, in my opinion, no CGI was good in this. The only good CGI, in my opinion, was the de-aging, and that's probably about it, really, because the cat CGI was creepy. Like, it's so shocking that the CGI for the animals in Stuart Little was much better than this, and, that and most ones are older than this. Like, I think the cat CGI in this is probably tied with the CGI that, that I saw for animals in Call of the Wild, released following year, as being both probably the worst animal CGI that I've seen so far, because it was terrible, and... And of course, Goose is also, a, of course, a flirk in, in, in disguise as a cat. And also as well, guys, one thing about this film in terms of story, which I thought was extremely dumb and really angered me, actually the first time I saw this, was I hated the revelation of how Fury lost his eye. Because it turns out, guys, at the, at the end of the film, when he's holding Goose, Goose scratches his eye out. And we even got Samuel Jackson nearly saying his iconic catchphrase in, in that scene as well, of course, which you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but, like, that scene was just extremely dumb, and I don't get it because in Cats Make a Winter Soldier, Fury says to, to Steve Rogers, last time I trusted someone, I lost an eye. So when he said that, I was expecting him to lose his eye by being shot by, by um, a scroll in disguise as, as a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent he trusted, like Coulson, for example. But, no... Instead of getting that, we got a very dumb scene where a cat scratches his eye out. Like, are you kidding me? Like, that was probably just absolutely terrible. I couldn't believe they did that. I thought it was really stupid. Like, you make us think he lost his eye to someone he trusted, according to Winter Soldier, but no. Oh, of course, that was just a cat. Like, oh my god. And speaking of a cat, guys, while I did love the mid-credit scene because it was probably the only scene in the film I was drawn into the most... I personally hated the post credit scene where we just see Goose on Fury's desk throwing up a Tesseract. Like, seriously, you made me stay behind in the credits to see that. Oh my god, that was just really ridiculous. So yeah, honestly guys, this one in my opinion is absolute trash. You know, you have loathsome characters in this who I don't care about, who I think are very annoying and... You underdevelop them, and and you ruin a good plot twist, which could have been Fury losing his eye to someone he trusted, but no. Honestly, right, I, I can't believe what I was watching, and last night's rewatch made me hate the movie a lot more as well. Because every time I watch this film, guys, my rating drops more and more, because I think when I first saw it, I think it gave it like maybe 6 out of 10 or something, and it's definitely dropped down since then, I'll definitely say that. But... For what it is worth, because of the, of the 90s setting and the 90s music in this and the de-aging and, and all sorts of Stan Lee uh, and the mid credit scene, I personally think this movie is trash, but I will, I will gladly watch over over Eternals, though. I'll definitely say that. Because that film is an absolute bore fest, and thankfully this film has more action than it, than it in my opinion. Although there isn't much action in this, I would, I would to be completely honest, either. But all I can say is, screw this trash all the way. In my opinion, it always will be the worst of Infinity Saga. On a more positive note, though, at least, of course, um, next week, I'll, of course, be watching my favourite of the MCU, though, thankfully, which this film leads into the mid credit scene. But honestly, this film is just an, an absolute joke, in my opinion. And if you guys want to see a much better portrayal of, of Carol Danvers than this, I'd recommend Earth's Mightiest Heroes, in my opinion, the greatest Marvel show of all time, because in my opinion, that show treats Carol Danvers far better than this film does, in my opinion. Much better. Because I really do feel that, of course, um, in this, they, they really ruin the character a lot. And I just couldn't believe, really, what they did. So, if you guys want to see a much better version, I'd reckon Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Because he, in fact, she's much better as a character. More likeable, more well-developed. And and also, as well, in my opinion, I do also as well think that um, Brie Larson was definitely a miscaster, in my opinion, for a role. Because, because the character is supposed to be older than, than how she looks in this film. Older than this, but they, they casted a young actress for some reason. Because after seeing, of course, Fennel Goldbolt in the Devil's Daughter Harlequin Story fan film, which I'd recommend you guys go see because it's an absolute masterpiece, 
I wish she got to play Carol Danvers in this, because I think she'd have been a far better choice. Far better. But unfortunately, that wasn't to be, was it? So, oh dear. So, if you guys were wondering what I would give this movie out of 10, well, as I said, guys, my rating has constantly dropped every time I watch this, and now, from last night's rewatch, I now give Crafty Marvel, as I call it, a very bad score of 3 out of 10. So, you screw it all away. Thankfully, now we're going to be watching a far better film than this trash. Um, so, guys, this is me doing my a trash talk of Crafty Marvel, as I call it, in my opinion, the worst Infinity Saga movie, and the most overrated of a saga. So, you know, drill, guys, be sure to give this video a like. Also, be sure to leave in the comments what you guys think of, of Captain Marvel. If you've seen it on the comments below, what you think of it. Also, be sure to join Team Prime Press and Scrum with his coming future. If you'd like to be a member, you can join using the PCLs or the description. And I'll see you all later.